of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Welcome, friends and all. It is another beautiful Sunday, we hope and assume. And you will notice here together, it's myself and, of course, our pastor. Just in case you can't tell from the space around her, she is joyfully joining us from Germany. Wait for the announcements to find out all of the magical things going on with that. But, Pastor, it is a beautiful thing to have you here and leading our congregation, especially this week with the reading that we have ahead of us. I know I have questions for you, and it's a beautiful introduction from John back into that gospel rhythm that I often speak of. So, friends and all that are joining us, get ready for quite a journey today, and thank you, Pastor, for joining us. Of course, I'm very excited. So, let's pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. today comes from the gospel according to John in the sixth chapter. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. Amen. That was tough, wasn't it? That is, that's pretty hard to read out loud. It specifically says, eat the flesh, drink the blood. It's sharp. It sounds like an episode of, do you remember the show uh, True Blood on HBO? It <laughs> sounds like that. It gets your attention. Does yeah. it sound as uh, direct? Does it have a kind of cannibalism vibe in German? 
Definitely. I can say perhaps it's even worse because in your own language, it, it feels closer to you than in, in, in another language. And yeah, for me, um, the only way I can think about it is uh, that it's not cannibalism is because if we read further and we hear how the story ends, there's no cannibalism in there. So we're good. Um, so I was thinking like, why does he write it like this, the author? And I think, like you said, he wants to irritate us. He wants to shock us. He wants to draw our attention to something that's very important to him um, and I think to understand this passage right we should look um, upon the the relationship um, between the lit literal versus the met metaphorical understanding um, because um, in, right in the first verse of the gospel it said that the word Jesus became flesh and blood and lived among us so I think he wants to emphasize in this paragraph that God really became one of us and he knows what life is about and he yeah he threw his whole existence into serving us into showing us god's love and we're supposed to participate in this and to try to follow in his footsteps so i think that's uh one first a uh, little way for me to like get through to um, through this tough text yeah that literal metaphorical yes. move yes uh, and it kind of goes it kind of goes back and forth Tell and me more. I, what is your thought? Yeah, if I if I reread it, especially with a focus on that move from the literal to the metaphorical and kind of back and forth, there is a bit of a movement to it. And I think it's part of creating a movement from uh, an intellectual, what we're thinking with our brain, to a spiritual, how our soul hears it and understands it. The lectionary, some days it gives, some days it takes. The lectionary gives us this reading just as we've read it today, but it, it omits the final line of it, which is, he said these things, being Christ, he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. So this was not a conversation that he was having with the disciples and fellow uh, believers or those that had been following him. He was speaking to a well-educated Jewish population, you know, sequential people of the law, not law and gospel, but people of the law. And so he starts with that metaphorical, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And then all that does is stir debate. It says, you know, the Jews argued amongst themselves and they came back to him with more questions. And that's when he comes in with that very sharp, very truly, I tell you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man. So he gives them a nice, like historical Old Testament kind of language to bring them along. And then he goes into that even more literal. And then he goes into the metaphorical. That's that move. And I think he's asking them to kind of gamble and stop being intellectual. I've appealed to your intellectual side. You said, yes, I agree. And then he's taking them on the journey into it being a spiritual understanding. It's incredible to see those two movements. And I think there's huge, a huge value in it always. It's quite a movement in there. And what's a great consolence to me is that the dispute and the argument didn't stop there because from early Christianity to today, theologians of all different nations and times, they always argued exactly about this how can we understand this what does it mean that jesus is the bread and the and the wine and the flesh and the blood and it's it's go been going on for centuries and i think it's very important but uh, we see that even in the Pro protestant community there were very different opinions about this and i think also, it's very important to like um, run intellectually about stuff and trying to wrap your mind around things. It's just like you said, I think we always need to come back to the question like, what does it mean to us spiritually? How can we um, as, a, as a people of today, like get our connection to this, to this passage, to this metaphorical language Jesus is using? Exactly, that, that movement to make it spiritual because let's be honest, intellectually, we're not going to get it. Literally, we're not going to get it. But those explained metaphors, and you use the word us in there. Do you hear a movement in here as well from individual to communal? Yes, 
Uh, definitely I do and I think this is because uh, one of the reasons that Eucharist became so important to people because they made the experience that they can best um, come near God or, or come near the, the mystery of it all like in, in a group and being together and sharing um, this experience and thinking about what's happened and remembering what Jesus said and did in his flesh, in his blood, in, with his whole existence, and then trying to get nourishment and strength from that as a group, as a uh, yeah, as a um, communal thing. So it's called communion for a reason, <laughs> I think. Exactly, and, and yet we still have we still have debates over what counts as communion, which uh, we're not. I'm not going to go anywhere near those those, those debates. You're not. You, yeah, exactly. I I say we all just step back from it, and. If I think about, uh, we often read passages, scripture, and it does seem like a, a newspaper article from history. And we want to be literal about it, but it is there and it does appeal to our spiritual side. And when we look at the other gospels, they have these moments with the bread and the wine that are how we have always understood what they call the institution of the last supper. Right, like these are the exact words when you're at communion or Eucharist, the meal, as we call it in the ELW. Those are the exact words that we see in scripture. But John uh, doesn't have that in this gospel. And I think that's great because it's a passage that's speaking to a well-educated, cynical world. That's us. Like I can sit here and, and yell at Google or yell at any of my technology. Like how much does an adult bobcat weigh? Like, mm -hmm. We have so much science and we have so much technology and information around us. I think we are that cynical world. And we need to be reminded to be spiritual, to be communal, to understand these metaphors that way. And the wording in John takes us away from the other gospels that say, this is how you, you break the bread. This is how you serve the wine. And instead, I think it says this gospel where the message of like, here is Jesus in the flesh, like suffering the things that we suffer, enjoying the things that we enjoy, gathering, praying, thanking, breaking bread, sharing, feeding, teaching, blessing, sending, but without the details that we would love to get stuck on. And that speaks to where we are now. Like, look at you and I. We live in Zoom land. Yes, we're on we a do. we're on a detour in Zoom land. Some churches have reopened, tried to figure out how to do things with smaller groups, but the rest of us are on our detour. But many are finally opening their homes to friends and family, and so those words of John I love because in my cynical nature I need to be reminded of these, and it encourages us to break the bread and share the wine in remembrance at our table alone or with others because it is the gathered. Uh, it's, a, it's a literal and it's a metaphorical sustenance that we bring in and we share and it strengthens us yes. to bring in and to share. Yes. It strengthens us to go forward. It doesn't say that we have to be in the church. It doesn't say magical words. It doesn't. It just says... God abides in you, and this is how you can remember it. Yes, I agree, and I totally can understand if people are desperate for their rituals and their like what they're used to, and especially I know that the communion is for some people a very, very special thing they they long for, and they have waited for yeah. so long, and I'm very happy to um, to to help fill that need once I finally arrive uh, what, whether it be like with a visit at a house or in the church or on the lake or wherever we can and want to do it um, I'm very happy but in the meantime I want to encourage you like to search in your daily life because we are praying in the our father give us our daily bread so it's nothing we just do like once a month or we do like in a we need it every day. We can't have the communion every day, but we need to have our spiritual bread every day. And I want to encourage you to search for this in your daily life. Where can you find nourishment for your heart? 
like in for, for your emotional or for your for, for your thoughts where can you find that and um yeah i'm very i'm very excited about searching together with you in whichever form is possible in these crazy times and it sounds like john gives us permission and encouragement to think broadly about what it looks like to receive and to share physical and spiritual sustenance amen amen to that Let us pray. Rooted in Christ and sustained by him in us as we are in him, together with the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. First, let us have a silence for our own thoughts and our own prayers. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, scholars, authors, seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding and conversation. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, mend the earth, cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who suffer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly, especially our musical director, Linda, those who contribute their voices, like Tanya, and of course, the Schweiger family, who often perform. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others who try to enrich our worship and our daily lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we mourn with those who mourn, hurt with those who hurt, and celebrate with those who celebrate. Together in your sight and the sight of the gathered, let us mark the joyous occasion of some birthdays this week. With the host of heaven, we celebrate with Dinah Wienecke, Isabella Schmidt, and Clara Schneeberger. And with all those with heart of celebration, we give thanks in hope, asking, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which 
we abide in your love and on the last day raise us up with all of the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace with the God who abides in you to love and serve the same. Thanks be to God. afternoon, friends, and all. Whenever you are joining us to listen to this, these are our announcements from Martin Luther Church for the week of lectionary 20. For the rest of us, that means August 15th, Sunday service. 
And I am joined virtually by... Annika Klappert, pastor of Martin Luther Church since August 1st. Now still remotely working from Germany due to some travel hiccups uh, with Corona. Uh, I am still in Germany, but I, I work already for your beautiful congregation and I'm part of the services and the radio devotions and uh, get to meet a lot of people already online. So that's a very good thing about the modern technologies. The good thing about modern technology. Thank you for leaving that sentence open for those of us that feel like we could find some bad things as well. <laughs> any, uh, any hints about the coming service? It's in the last third of the book. Anything else we should know about uh, to prepare ourselves for this Sunday, August 15th? I would say it's a rather substantial lecture. And uh, yeah, we have a lot to chew on, I think. <laughs> A lot to chew. It's meaty. It's it's a tough. Uh, it was a tough yes. passage, and thank you for helping me to understand it better. We have a lot going on in this community, other than, of course, waiting patiently for you and your husband to be able to arrive. Whilst we wait, this Friday, something I'm incredibly excited about. So, if people are hearing this on Sunday, it has already happened, and I assume it was outrageously successful. But with a beautiful donation from our, our friends at, at Mimico Presbyterian, we have great um, Kit Kat ice cream bars that I'm saving room for starting now uh, so that we can snack on as we enjoy the unveiling of the community pantry, which has been sitting outside Martin Luther Church on Lakeshore, all wrapped up. And I'm very excited about it. And that is the production of Johnny, our summer student, and of course, Dan the Man who I have to sit in his position now and try to do announcements. And it's, speaking of weighty things, being Dan the man is tough. And he's done a beautiful job of producing this with Johnny. And we get to unveil it today on behalf of Martin Luther Church and our community on Lakeshore. So that's Friday. What's going on on Saturday? I heard there's going to be a Lakeshore cleanup hosted by one of the confirmants of our congregation, Michelle. Uh, it was her idea and um, it's followed by a picnic with all the participants. So I think it's a perfect combination of working for the good of creation and then enjoying the company and the spirit of, of the people that are working on it. So um, I'm very sad I can't be part of it. To be honest, I'm, I'm excited about that one, too. And there's food involved. I'm starting to see the common thread. Yes. <laughs> That's how we hope to grow some good by doing some good in our community. And it's exciting. For those who uh, do not receive midweek emails, or maybe there's just a lot of information there because there's a lot going on, make sure that you do have a peek at the part about Jocelyn. So Jocelyn is the daughter of Dan the Man. So Dan the Man is here, and this is one of his charming offspring. And she's a lovely soul, and she's doing her grad work at Trent University. And she has a community-based survey that she is offering as well, and would like to hear from parents and guardians very specifically about how things went and how things are going for you and your family during the pandemic. I believe there's even a cash prize that I'm very excited about in there. So I'm going to pretend to be a parent or guardian for about five minutes if anybody wants to lend me a child. <laughs> so that's another one of our ongoing things, as well as our Masks for Good campaign comes back to get everybody ready for back to school. And of course, our Grow Some Good with These Seeds is a project that also works in the fall because of the, the some of the seed donations we've received. So that's an ongoing. And we would always encourage people to jump in, get involved, reach out to any of us. If you ever have a question in life, I think, Pastor, you've already learned this lesson where do you go when there are big questions in life? To the Martin Luther Church office. Ask Marlena. Marlena. <laughs> yes, yeah. she knows about everything and she will very friendly help you out with any question you might have. And if you are, for example, uh, example <laughs> worrying about uh, practical things that, that need a pr in person, like uh, um, caring for, then you can just call, give her a call for example, for a funeral or a visit in a hospital or something, if you need um, this kind of counseling, this kind of um, people around you in, in times of need, then just call her and she will gladly set something up with our church council team or with the German speaking pastors of the greater Toronto area. Exactly. All of those things. It's, it's always straight away. Way head, head to Marlena and the office. We are, of course, all here, uh, whether in person or otherwise, we're all here to help. That is my final question and maybe an announcement. 
we've, we've been praying hard. We've been washing the floors of the parsonage. When do we get to greet you and your husband, Tim? That's still open, but today our visa application was finally um, addressed to the immigration office. We did everything we could, fingerprints included. Um, there's nothing they know about us now, and now it takes like two to six weeks. And we hope it's more the two weeks, um, and then we can get to you. But we inform you as soon as we know, of course. So another biblical lesson in detouring and patience. Oh, yes. Amen exactly. to that. Never be afraid to pray to God and your embassy. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love it. Thank you very much, Pastor. And thank you for letting me be a part of the service with you this coming Sunday. I look forward to seeing more of it. So thank yes, you all. This, the, these are your announcements for the week of August 15th, I want to say. I think that's yes. about accurate. Thank you very much, Adam. And have a blessed week. Bye-bye.